Hey everyone, this is Rico Figliolini. Thanks for coming to this podcast, Peace Tree Corner's Life. I have a special guest today, Lisa Anders from Explore Gwinnett. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Rico. How are you? Good, good. Before we get into our conversation, it's good, this is going to be great. I love talking shop. I used to be a film production major when I was in college a long time ago, but I'm, I'm fanatics that way. I'm, I love watching trailers. So we're going to be talking movies, TV, anything entertainment, everything that Explore Gwinnett does. So that's a small part of what they do. And this is a tremendous part of what they do with tourism, hotels and, and all that. So, but we'll get into that. I just want to say thank you to our sponsors for these podcasts. Uh, one of them is EV Remodeling. They, they are owned by Eli, him and his family. They live here in Peachtree Corners. They do a great job. They're designed to build uh, remodeling from just one room to several rooms. Uh, putting a deck, flooring, and uh, they'll design the piece for you as well. The whole interior work from flooring to ceiling. So check them out, evremodelinginc.com. And as well, Clearway Fiber. They're an internet company, service company that provides about a thousand businesses, if not one by now, in Peachtree Corners. They're internet services. Not the, not the typical cable company at all because they're local. They uh, will attend to your needs. If you're a business, you should be checking them out. And that's Clearwave Fiber. So t thank you to those two sponsors from Flowers. They love to uh, support our journalism, these podcasts. So thanks for, for that. Now, let's get into this. Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself and what exactly is Explore going at, for those that may not be familiar with it. Sure. Um I am the executive director of Explore Gwinnett, and our full name is Tourism and Film, because we encompass both. Um, we are Gwinnett County's, what is known as destination marketing organization. And that means we are responsible for and work every single day to bring in conventions, meetings, conferences, sporting tournaments, you name it. Literally, we want people to come and spend all their money in Gwinnett <laughs> at our <laughs> hotels and our restaurants and right. our gas stations and everything else, and then head on home after a few days. Um, so we work really closely. We're funded by a portion of the hotel motel tax, right. and we work really closely with our hotels in Gwinnett. There are, believe it or not, 105 hotels in Gwinnett County, mm. Yeah, as well yeah. as Parks and Rec, um, as well as Gas South District multiple special event venues. I mean, literally, if there's a building, we could probably figure out how to put a meeting or an event in there. <laughs> um, so I've got a sales team, a three, mm -hmm. three person sales team, and they each focus on a different area, like a different market, corporate groups, association, international, of course, with Gwinnett. And then I've got a marketing team of three. And, you know, if you've ever heard of, and I feel like you probably have, because I know you love to support the restaurants in Peachtree Corners, mm -hmm. yep. go to like Gwinnett Burger Week or Gwinnett Beer Week, or you've heard of Sola, the South Korean food tours, all those kind of initiatives fall under the creative mindset of the marketing team. So we've mm -hmm. created those to kind of support the independent restaurants, our breweries, our craft beer trail, all that sort of thing. Um, and that's really for visitors and for residents. And right. then the film right. office is another component, which is we are what Gwinnett County is known as a camera ready community. And that means we have the facilities, we have the policies, we have the structure, and we have a film friendly destination. And that is across our cities, across our county government, our fire marshal, our police, all of that. Um, each county in the state of Georgia actually is a point person who's their camera ready rep. And that's the first person the film location crews are going to call when they get to the area. And I'm actually the camera ready rep for Gwinnett. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've been working on film for so long that we've really expanded our efforts and become like a full, full service, I guess, for like a better phrase, <laughs> film office over the last five years, because there's a tremendous amount of filming, obviously wow. Georgia, number one filming location in the world, obviously in Atlanta, but Gwinnett is up there in the state as one of the top filming destinations. Wow. It's amazing. The um, We were on a panel a few weeks ago, 
and you were sitting next to me and when it was your turn to to talk about what was going on i was like damn i published these two magazines and i damn, did not know half that stuff <laughs> yeah, this is like unbelievable because i remember when before we had the tax incentive for movies and stuff there was like not much going on i mean there were things going on but there's not much going on and so that was what 10 years ago maybe or a little longer yeah, than the, that? The, the difference in dollars is really striking 10 years ago the expenditures, not the economic impact, because, you know, nobody right. believes in that number because they're usually kind of fake and blown up. Mm. Um, this actual spend by film and TV was like two hundred and sixty five million dollars, which is not an insignificant amount of money. Mm -hmm. But fast forward 10 years later with our 30 percent tax incentive in place and in 2023, uh, which is really like it's a fiscal year. So it's like June right. 22, to June 23. It was 4.4 billion and the you know from maybe april may and june of 23 everyone was on strike yes. so it was really a that's like a nine month cycle yeah. really so the impact is gigantic i mean 10 years ago there were probably five studios in the entire state now mm -hmm. there are like 50 major tv production studios wow. i mean when you had i remember when um walking dead came out mm -hmm. and uh walking dead shot in, in the state of georgia and how how long how long, i think that series is 10 years old now and um there's been spin-offs they had a finale i think at one point this past year or something yeah. but there's several spin-offs from that that alone i remember i i know if you know, if you're out there enough, you, you get to meet all sorts of people that have been touched by that production alone in one way or another. Um, and that's just one movie set. I mean, Netflix does lots of stuff here. Amazon, I think, does. I mean, so many, so much that's out there. Do you, do you get a chance to, uh, to see any movie stars or to uh, be on set every once in a while? Um, I, I, you know, I have. And I will tell you that there were two people that were sort of, I mean, and it's not, that's not my aspiration because right. it's not something, one, it's a lot less exciting than I think people think it is. It's yeah, a lot sure. of wait and see, wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, but my two people that I really, one day really kind of hope to meet, I hope to meet The Rock. Oh, and yeah, I was okay. able to meet him one day when I was at Third Rail Studios, which is over in Dorville on the GM plant site. He's oh, nice. a very large man with big arms, um, and, but he, he was very friendly <laughs> and offered to take pictures with everyone. And I oh, will say nice. I declined it because I didn't want to be one of those people who take those pictures. Oh. And then I met Jason Bateman because Ozark did a tremendous amount of filming in Gwinnett County. Yes. Yeah. And he's always kind of been like my um, celebrity secret boyfriend. Oh. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And while he was very nice, he was um, a very petite fellow. And mm. I think you find out that a lot of movie stars and oh, celebrities sure. are way shorter than you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. man. So, and, and they, it was like some of the scenes I think were shot here in Peachtree Corners, certainly mm -hmm. in Norcross. Uh, um, Ozark did a tremendous amount of filming. I mean, they had a, they had a fabulous, crew that was with them the entire time actually i don't know if you can see this but i'll show it to you this is the location yeah. um, the location manager swag gift which they actually gave to a number of people in gwinnett county for their mm -hmm. work and support because they did so much work here but they filmed a lot um they filmed one of the big office buildings um which was bird enterprises which okay. was Jason Bateman's company uh -huh. The big building that got blown up was a building in Tech Park, and that was an ongoing um, location oh, wow. throughout season uh, two and three. Um, we did a lot of road closures in that area through Tech mm -hmm. Park. Yeah, I um, remember that time. Yeah, There was, uh, if you remember, Lickety Splits, mm -hmm. which was the infamous strip club. That was yes. actually a closed restaurant that is on Oak Brook Parkway in Norcross. 
Oh, okay. So a lot of like places that you would drive by and never know. Um, if you watch the episode where Jason Bateman and Laura Linney, they're going to marriage counseling mm -hmm. and their marriage therapist later gets killed because she knows some of their secrets. Mm -hmm. The home that they were at in there is actually in Berkeley Lake. So okay. they did quite a bit of filming in Berkeley Lake. So they really did quite a bit in yeah. Southwest Gwinnett as a whole. I, I don't think people realize that if you have, I know a couple of friends have or well, had historic homes in downtown Norcross mm -hmm. and they would put it in the registry and then film producers would, uh, would call up eventually and want to, uh, to use their home. One, one of our yeah. friends, you know, she, I think it was, um, I forget which movie it was, uh, walk through the mountain or something. I forget the, I walk uh, the through movie. the woods with Robert Redford. There you go. Yes. And who was the other star? It was Redford and another, it was an older star as well. But, um, uh, there was, there was a Jennifer true. Aniston movie that did a lot of filming in downtown Norcross. And then yes. there was Walk yeah. Through the Woods. I think that had yeah, Morgan Freeman in it too. Yeah. There was another co-star and the co-star actually slept, tried to sleep on the, um, the swing chair on her porch and broke the chair. Meanwhile, Redford slept in her bed one afternoon because he needed to take a nap. So now she could say, he slept in my bed. You know, it's just, it was kind of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> typical and stuff, right? One of the, like you mentioned, the location databases, that's one of the things that we actually do at the film office. Um, we actually have done a call for homes in downtown Norcross more than once. I'm sure. And people can submit their homes for inclusion. And then yep. myself... And we have a photographer on staff um, or he's now on contract. And then we go out and we actually go into the homes and take the location photography. And then we take oh, the photography, okay. we upload it into all the movie databases. There's uh -huh. a state one. There's one on our website. And then okay. we also create a gallery um, in Smug Mug, which is the preferred method for location managers. Mm -hmm. So we've done those in on most of our major cities and we go search for locations all the do. time, okay. uh, every single day. We've done three wow. locations this week, new locations, wow. constantly. It's not, it's not just homes. It's probably office buildings, lots, uh, we, places. Yeah, properties. we've done office buildings. We've done homes. We've done all the Gwinnett County. We're in the midst. We did all the Gwinnett County high schools. We're in the midst of adding the okay. middle schools. Huh. We've done the jail. We've done alleyways. We've done side streets. We've done farms. We've done churches. We've done temples. We've done gas stations. We do convenience stores. We've done okay. uh, almost 500 photo shoots to add to the locations. Wow. And that's just so now. If your listeners have something, they should reach out and let me know because we're always oh. looking for something new. Yeah, something unique, and I'm sure the county probably has that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, pri that. you know, I would say, like, for private homes, we're always looking for things. Historic homes are great. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's a lot of filming in downtown Norcross. Right. But sometimes they're looking for a log cabin or mm. mid-century or a really modern home, which of those two are a little bit harder right. to find in Gwinnett. Right. Um, you know, a lot of even times... It's just something that can be controlled. Like anything empty is fantastic. You know, yes. and a lot of times yeah. people always think, oh, they're looking for something new and shiny. But I see, um, I see, if I see graffiti or a tunnel or mm -hmm. an industrial site or whatever, yeah, yeah. those are awesome too because they want things that look like real life. Yeah. And so many times, you know, you look at every TV show, nothing's filmed in 2023, like set in 2023. Right. It's right. Set in They're the old. 70s or the 80s or the 90s. So right. old, dated, throwback. We love yeah. all of that. And I, I would imagine, even, I remember um, a couple of my kids were um, almost extras. I think it was on Divergent or something. Yeah. And um, they rented the old, I think it was the GM. Uh, plant um, along hey, 285. OFS. 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 Right. Before it was OFS, I think. they um, It was an empty building, right? Uh, or maybe it was OFS. Uh, at the actually, time. that building has never been empty. That was Lucent Technologies. 
Okay. And then Lucent, um, I guess, was bought or merged. I don't know the exact situation um, with OFS. OFS is actually still on that site, which is right on Jimmy Carter, right by the bridge, Jimmy Carter. Right. But the bulk of that building is actually now owned by Gwinnett County. And that's actually one of our movie studios. Currently, right. Currently, okay. and has been okay. for about 10 years. Um, wow. That's okay. where um, a vast amount of Marvel movies have been filmed. You'd be amazed what's been filmed there. Um, Black Panther 1, Black wow. Panther 2, the largest grossing movies in like the universe were filmed in North Cross. <laughs> well, at least in the Marvel universe. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> all the Hunger Games were filmed there. Yes, Multiple right. Fast and Furious. Captain America was filmed there. Tons of like the Avengers movies. Wow. If you look, if you go behind, we've done some tours there. They have the largest, one of the largest uh it's like a green screen, but it's actually blue. Uh, it's the largest blue screen in the world is in the back of that building. Right. So Gwinnett County owns part of that building? Part of the state, I guess County that was- owns the majority of that building. Okay. Wow. Okay, that's a, that's a great public-private partnership, I guess, to be able to own the building, provide that for um, studios to work in. Well, I think that, you know, um, I don't know what the long-term plans are for that space. I know that transit was always a possibility there. Mm, but in the meantime, yeah. because if you've ever been inside that building, it has cavernous warehouse yeah, space, huge. Yeah. huge amount of parking. It has the green screen. And there are also some ancillary businesses that are associated with film and TV behind there. Okay. So I think that Gwinnett County saw it as an interim solution and but they've been pleasantly surprised by how successful that space has been over the past seven, eight, nine years. Right. So do you see things from your point of view continuing to progress? I mean, I know at some point legislation, some factions wanted to stop the incentive. And if I remember correctly, North Carolina, or was it South Carolina? One of the Carolinas stopped theirs and everything came south to us from that Correct. state. One of one of the first shows that I actually worked on was the TV show, the Fox TV show, Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. And that was a direct get from North Carolina and then mm -hmm. suspending their incentive. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I, th I think that, you know, our tax incentive has remained. Yes, there are people who advocate against it, but mm -hmm. it has been supported by every governor, every Republican governor, over the past decade and has yeah. recently been reinforced and they've made some changes to strengthen kind of the reporting and the auditing procedure mm -hmm. of that tax incentive, which is smart and probably needed. Yeah. Sure. I, you know, there's a lot of people who are actively out there advocating for it. I don't see it going away. There is really so much investment now because mm -hmm. now we're not just a location hub. We're a production hub and yeah. we're, the people who used to just come from California and work and then go back home, they're now like residents and they're voters. So right. I think the tides have shifted. I don't see that. I, I mean, I think it's con there's always going to be scrutiny, mm -hmm. but I think For it's sure. here. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, scrutiny is good because just re it, it'll make something better. Because I, I remember hearing stuff like, certain tax incentives, some of the rules allowed for those incentives to be sold to other companies that were not maybe involved in the film industry or, or that there were some tax advantages to doing certain things with that incentive. Um, so, you know, adjusting it makes sense. The, the gaming industry, I don't know if that, if you touch upon that at all, even in what you do. Um, I mean, some of it's from production, even, but yeah, yeah, we, um, you know, gaming is, gamers are big. Um, and we, on the tourism side, have wor have been working for a long time through our sports commission, which focuses on kind of sporting, sporting events of all sizes, including and types, including gaming, um, has been working to try to bring an event here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times they're in downtown, 
you know, yeah, that's sure. been the big hub, like dream hack. But we actually just hosted our first e-games event. It was a 10 day event called rainbow six. Oh, uh, gamers okay. probably know what that is. I'm not a gamer, but it was very popular and it was hosted at the gas South arena um, and was oh. super successful. Um, and the arena was packed with gamers watching other people game. Um, yeah. so that's, that, that's what they do. Yes. That, that is what they do. But um, there's, it's, it's really big business. So that was our first get as far as e-games, but it's definitely on the horizon because it's kind of like pickleball in the sports world. Like right. the growth potential is endless. Yeah. Yes. I was at DreamHack last year and I'll be at DreamHack in December. Yeah. And it's exactly what you said. I mean, you have you have people from all over. I met so many different people out there. I met this um, 68 year old man. He's he's at the this booth with um, I think one of the booths where I forget. the I think it was Generac. That was the the company. And it was like, why is Generac? here? this is not a hardware shop. Right. They make generators. Right. Uh, but they were there because, you know, if you're gaming, you might need a generator, <laughs> you need a power system because those things suck the power. Some of those gaming systems. Yeah. But, uh, the tech usage was really, really yeah, high at the arena, yeah, but yes. it was a great, it was a great event. It yeah. Went really well. And it goes from all age groups. I mean, even if you're not, so the 68 year old was waiting for his son, who's like 28, I think, and he was gaming there, met another cu a couple younger couple, the 13 year old, they came from, I think it was, um, uh, Minnesota. They came. So then the 13 year old can be playing the Fortnite competition at DreamHack last year. Right. It's just like, it's amazing. The cross section of, of people that you'll find, not just the kids, but the adults that are there as well. And the gamers that, you know, that are out there, the influencers, the people on Twitch, on YouTube and all the panels and stuff. Can't wait to see more of that happening. Yes. Um, the, we, we can talk a little bit about tourism in a little while. I just want to ask you your take on AI. You know, every, every, I was at a chamber meeting this morning, Southwest Gwinnett chamber, and everyone introduced themselves and at least four people out of that group were talking about how they use AI in their business. Um, right. you know, whether it's creating a bot or whether it's using chat, chat GPT or using Bard, um, does Explore Gwinnett use AI in any way internally to do stuff, or do you, are you familiar with it being used in in the industry, like maybe in the hotel industry? Can you share some some exposure that yeah. you may have? I, I, it's a topic at every conference you know I've been at, like how to use it, how you know the the there there's always you know the advantages of AI versus the threat of AI, but mm. the reality is it's here it's always been here and it's just going to keep getting more immersed in everything that we do. So you've either got to figure out how to use it to your benefit and engage mm -hmm. with it, or it's just going to pass you by. Um, we use it a little bit internally. Um, you know, everything that we do, like we're in the midst of overhauling our website mm -hmm. and we'll be rolling a new one out in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of information on our website. It's insane. Yeah. So I see where people are like, Hmm, <laughs> I could create content really fast this way. But a lot of what we try to do is personal recommendations. Um, right. I think that a lot of AI is being used in some of that algorithm um, tools on our website. You know, like if you like this, you'll like this. Mm -hmm. We're certainly using it okay. in that way okay. Um, to, to make those choices easier, but also keeping everything within a very personalized experience mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't want to be seen. I mean, our, our brand is engagement and connection and personal connection and conversation. Right, right. We don't want to be, we don't want an automated bot on our website, answering questions. I, sure. I, you know, but behind not, the scenes, behind yeah. the scenes on the SEO and, and like yes. you said, that's how that. we're utilizing it is to improve the experience mm -hmm. and give opportunities, but doing it from a very personal, um, right. 
perspective. Right. AI can do really well in personalizing what you can serve up. Right. But what you serve up has to be the has to be produced by by humans. <laughs> okay. Um because otherwise, yeah, I mean, anyone that's used chat GPT, even version four of it and, and stuff, you cannot ever take its writing straight. I mean, it's just, it's right. too, it, you could tell um, something that's come off chat GPT. I mean, it just, I mean, I can tell if any, yeah. if, if anyone serves it to me, I, I, you could tell just from the cadence, from the phrasing of, of some of the lines and stuff where it's come from. Um, so it's not, it's not meant, I don't, you know, it's not where it needs to be at, at this point, but it may get there. I yeah, can I see think it. so too. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's a, you know, it is a good starting point. If, if someone is super understaffed and they don't mm -hmm. have a full marketing team, it can be, right. it can be a great tool. But the other area we try to focus on independent restaurants, off the beaten path restaurants, things sure. that are in our city centers. We're right. not out there. I mean, we certainly hope everyone's successful, but we're not going to be pushing Ruby Tuesdays or Olive Garden for our visitors to go to. Sure. And sure. those kind of standard restaurants that chat GPT kind of references, mm -hmm. we're always looking for the off the beaten path, independent restaurant, the, right. you know, H and W steakhouse or the sure. you know, something sure. new, something different. Um, and that just requires area, you know, knowledge and research and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. So I think kind of balancing it out. Do you, do you see other companies in the industry um, moving to use it or using it in unique ways? Have you seen any of that happen? I do. I mean, in our world, in the, in the DMO world, I mean, you're seeing some of the really big players do a lot of it. I mean, mm -hmm. because there's a, but it also requires a level of staff experience, mm, you know, yeah. to have a tech, to have a tech team or to have a research team or to have something like that, that really understands it can engage with it and can embed it and can do all those things. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see a small, typically a small organization, even maybe a mid-sized organization use it as much as some of the larger ones. I know there's been a really big investment in it. Really? Okay. Um, moving towards a little bit more traditional of what you, what the tourism part is, if you will. Mm -hmm. When we were on the panel together, you were talking about how the industry has changed quite a bit um, in the hotel industry, oh, especially yes. in right, especially in staffing. Where some place, some hotel might have thirty people now; they have thirteen people. Where the front, the bulk of what happens may happen at the front desk. Um, customer facing for the, the first people that get, hello, there's something wrong with my room and, and, and that type of thing, or someone may not have a reservation the right way. So you were talking about helping to educate, creating mm -hmm. an academy of a sort. So tell, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we um, pre COVID, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things changed in our industry and we pre COVID had a full time hospitality education program. And it was targeted not just towards hoteliers. We really wanted to educate everyone about how to be a tourism ambassador, how to support, mm -hmm. you know, your tourism entities. And that might just be, you might see it as your local restaurant, but we know that's a hot spot. Um, so it was cities were involved, attractions, hotels. We had an ambassador mm -hmm. core. Um, and with COVID that really stopped because, people a weren't meeting in person mm -hmm. and our hotel staffing got so limited. We had hotels that closed during COVID, you know, they didn't have time to do anything other than clean rooms and answer the phone. Um, so we've been rethinking and this is something I brought up when we were on that panel together, rethinking like, what do we do and what's, what's needed in this new iteration of the hospitality world and so we surveyed a lot of our hotels and we talked to them like every day. And I mean, everyone said front desk training, front desk training, because mm -hmm. here's the deal. We all know that you could have, you used to pay a front desk clerk. I'm making up a number $12 an hour and people would be super excited and you would get a top quality 
college student or, you know, a very customer service oriented person um, with the way the world is and the economics of the world today. If you pay that same amount, you are not getting that same quality of customer service or mm -hmm. just um, experienced individual. Um, so this, the struggle has been real <laughs> to imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and it's tough. It's a forward facing customer service. Customers are, are much more demanding than they used to be. I mean, you've seen the, the TikTok yes. videos at the yes. airport. Well, there's yes. plenty of TikTok videos to be made at a hotel front desk <laughs> as well. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a hard yeah. job and it requires, yeah. you know, a level of communication, a level of maturity, a level of critical decision-making that a lot of mm -hmm. people don't have. Mm -hmm. So we, um, our team, we have, uh, we're working on it right now. We're going to roll it out in 2024, but we're going to be doing some frontline training based on what our hotels need in terms of like de-escalating situations, okay. superior customer service, really understanding people's needs. Like sometimes right. it's just, they just don't get it. They haven't been out in the world enough. Um, and we're not going to ask them to come to us, which was mm -hmm. 2019 way of doing things, we're actually going to go into the hotels and train them so that people don't have to go off site. Right. Um, and well, then we're going to do it by cool. area. Yeah. We're going to be in like Norcross and Petrie corners and do right. the hotels there. Then we'll go into like Mala, Georgia district, do the hotels there. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very one-on-one -on -one and um, we're excited to roll it out because it's, you know, it, it sets the stage for the rest of your stay. Mm -hmm. And if, and if it's not yeah. a great experience when you check in, um, yeah. it just doesn't start the whole experience off like you want it to. So we want to make sure to start it off really strong mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yeah, I think everything being equal, every, people expect their rooms to be clean, the sheets replaced and stuff. Um, but the front desk can ruin that experience of, you know, of, of people being there. And I think part of that has to deal with the, the age group like you were saying before, that some people just don't get it. They don't understand because they're not um, talking on the same level as the travelers that they're meeting, right? Um, so you get people maybe, you know, millennials, younger people manning that desk. You get an older person walking in, you know, 30, 40, 40 something, and they're just not talking to each other the right way. Maybe one's a little bit more demanding. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and in this world right now, I know, for example, my son, um, he had an interview with a, a company, you know, a decent level, executive level, and um, they ghosted him. So it's not just employees ghosting oh. employers, it's employers ghosting employees, which doesn't make sense to me, but it happens. I thought that was a one-off, but he's like, no, it's happened to me before. And, and, I, and then I, I speak to some other placement people uh, that I know. They're like, oh my God, yes, it happens all the time. So you have yeah. companies that ghosting employees. That's because they want more money. They want a better place. Sometimes they want hybrid or remote. You can't right. do that in a hotel. You have to work on site, right? Right. <laughs> so it's a very niche, very different employee that you have to get there. And you have to have, and, and hopefully they, like you said, they have some critical thinking, some way of uh, working that job that makes sense, common sense. I mean, I it's, it, you know, it's like being any, any industry, not just hotels, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you go into a restaurant and you see the signs, you know, be kind yeah. to our servers. Yeah. It's tough to be in the hospitality industry these days because people's expectations candidly are, are unparalleled. And, mm. um, yeah. it, it's just, it's just a different world than it was quite yeah. honestly. So, being in a hotel, being a restaurant server, you know, being any forward facing customer service position has, mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, become exponentially harder over the last three or four years. Um, so mm -hmm. getting those people when it's not a highly paid position, mm -hmm. getting those top line people is, is, is not an easy task. So Explore Gwinnett doesn't have a job board for the industry, right? I mean, the people. We do. Yeah, we do you? on our website. Yeah, okay. we post. Um, our hotel, we'll po we post any job within the hospitality industry. It can be restaurants, okay. it can be the convention center, the gas South district, they have positions. 
Uh, that's where we post our positions when we have them. Um, mm -hmm. Hotel sales positions, pretty much anything. So yeah, um, if you go to exploregwinnett.org, you can go to the job board and um, there's always something up there. And we also link to like um, a couple of our industry sites that have job boards, like the Georgia mm. Association of Convention and Visitor Bureaus or right, right. Lord Georgia, the state office, things like that. Okay. Does, do you find, Lisa, that, you know, everyone has, everyone's using an iPad, an iPhone, or, you know, a smartphone of some sort. Technology has really changed everything we do. I mean, everything's app-based, and, and lots of things are gamified. I mean, it's just like okay. you can't get away from the stuff. We're not talking about gaming like in, in uh, hotel gaming, or, you know, casino gaming. We're talking about gamification of every, everything that we do, services that we want. Um, do you see technology um, changing the industry you're in for the good, the better? What do you see oh, I think coming I, up? Yes, yeah? yes. It's funny you say this. We had a marketing team meeting this morning and I was meeting with them and we are actually getting ready to gamify a few of our initiatives. It's funny you use that word. We're working with a company uh, beginning in 2024 called Ben Wango, um, mm -hmm. and they are uh, a tech company, a tourism tech company. And it's um, like for our beer tours or okay. for beer week or burger week, one of our Gwinnett burger week, like it is going to allow us to kind of expand what we're doing, like create a burger hall of fame. Cause we have this, dedicated group of people who every year for burger week, they go to every single restaurant. They post yeah. every single day that they, the, and they do, you know, seven days of burgers and they're big burgers. It's a lot of calories in one week, but yeah. like we, we want to engage even further with these people. Yeah. So we're going to do like a passport. We're going to just do it. We're doing okay. a bunch of things with it. So especially in 2024, cause this feels like for us, our first, full year that feels real since COVID in terms mm -hmm. of planning and budgeting and implementing new things. We have like three major tourism tech things involved um, plan for our 2024 budget. Okay. Better research okay. project and gamification aplenty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, good. I mean, it's everything's like that, right? So I can't get off Call of Duty mobile. <laughs> <laughs> blow off steam doing that i mean i'll uh, be honest this this thing is literally my life oh I, sure. yeah. when i look at my hours of usage on my phone it's appalling and shocking at the same time wait wait, wait. i got i got two yeah. <laughs> besides the ipad mine was, yeah, like but... 18, mine was like 18 hours a day it was Jeez. bad not yeah, healthy yeah. that is 18 hours a day what do you sleep that's I'm like, on my phone. I mean, I yeah, yeah. I use my phone as as opposed to even using a laptop that much mm, because so okay. much of what I do is texting, especially with filming. It's very short. It's very fast. Sure. It's texting. It's calling. It's doing all that. So it's just much easier on your phone. Oh yeah, for sure. So so we so to bring business into Gwinnett County. Um, do you, do you guys do like a road show, you know, a dog and pony show, what they used to call the dog and pony show, I guess, um, go out, of, go out of town, try to, you're essentially trying to, maybe the word is not poach, but you're trying to get other shows, other things, other events um, to come to. For filming, to um, for filming no, yeah. we don't. What we've done is we've worked really, really hard to make the ease of doing business in Gwinnett, uh -huh. the best, the most yes. efficient and the most affordable in terms of permitting costs in Metro Atlanta and in Georgia. And I can unequivocally say, I believe that we are. And okay. that's through a lot of collaboration and support because we have um, complete buy-in from Gwinnett County at the highest level, which is great because they own a lot of buildings. They mm. own parks. Oh. They, they oh, own sure. all okay. sorts of buildings. Right. Um, every city 
has been supportive and engaged. Every, every city has a film person. Every city has a process. Mm. Everyone knows, mm. Hey, we're all trying to make sure this happens and also make sure that our residents are happy and, you know, not calling the city manager about a filming project. We all have kind of the same goal. Right. Um, but part of what we've done, we, Gwinnett County, um, I have to give huge props to Gwinnett County Transportation. They are mm. simply mm. the very best at working with for road closures. Um, okay. We've closed over the last eight years, city, county, state roads, probably 200 times. And I think we've had one complaint. Wow. Um, they just have been so good to work with and they yeah. try to make it happen, but they always, mm -hmm. you know, keep the residents first and foremost, make sure that there's viable alternatives, you know? Right. Um, sure. Sure. so it's, it's, um, it's been a, it's been a really good experience and, and when it has not gotten greedy, um, a lot of filming has left the city because mm -hmm. of the cost of doing business has gotten really, really out of hand. You're talking about Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, who, mm -hmm. you know, we love to have filming there, but there's, um, there's a lot of demand and the cost mm -hmm. has gone way up. Sure. And so they, we have a lot of people who come from Atlanta and said, you guys charge fair costs for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not going up because it's just a popular spot. Mm -hmm. um, and people appreciate not being gouged. And so mm -hmm. across the board, we've been really fortunate that way. You know, I don't know about other counties. I know living in Gwinnett County since 95, having been on, um, on the planning commission for three years and a couple of years on the parks and recreation authority uh, back during the late nineties, early 2000, the County really thinks long-term. I think the County lo does a great first class job on a lot of things that we do. I don't see that always in other cities, but certainly not always in Atlanta. Um, so it's good to see, you know, forward to the thing, thinking people. They, they have made it. I can, I can only speak to filming really, but they have, they have allowed us to make dealing with the county at many, many levels an amazingly yeah. unbureaucratic experience. And I know that that's very rare for my colleagues. Yeah, I'm sure. So did, has there been anything that we've missed that we should, that you'd like to talk about that we... I mean, I would say in terms of filming, the exciting thing is that the actor strike finally settled after six long yes. months. Yep. So um, while we have not had any filming other than some student films and some commercials over the last six months, um, filming is about to kick into super high gear. I mean, I, I will tell you that today, which is really kind of the first day back, we've already talked to five productions that are actively looking and are going to be filming in Gwinnett and are like, Oh my God, we're ready to go. We're so excited. So it's going to be, a, it's going to be a crazy next six, eight, mm. nine, 12 months because there's a lot of pent up demand and a lot of pending projects. Sure. Yeah. I would imagine the floodgates are opening, so it's yes. going to be interesting. That is cool. True. Lisa, it's always a pleasure. Um, especially talking stuff like this. I love, talk about movies and tourism. It's just like, it's one of those niches that just, you know, different than, than the norm roofs. Yeah. Counting. It's, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I love it as a career, because I've been yeah. doing this for a long time, like 30 years. And, um, uh -huh. since I was in college and I literally have never had the same day twice ever uh -huh. in my life. Cool. Exciting. And that's, that's great. That's great to have a job like that. It is. Um, I love it. So I appreciate Lisa Anders, Explore Gwinnett, to, uh, for you sharing your time with us. Uh, I'm sure people listening to this will have learned quite a bit that they didn't know. Um, and if you have questions for Lisa, or if you're interested in any aspects of what, what goes on, where, where can they reach you or check on Explore Gwinnett? Um, probably the best way would be email. Um, and if they just email me at Lisa 
at explore, E-X-P-L-O-R-E, Gwinnett.org. Mm -hmm. If someone's got something they're interested in looking at as a location or they just have a question, anything, um, I will answer it all. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. And um, if anyone wants to visit the website, exploregwinnett.org, right, is the website. Um, there's, uh, if you're looking at doing some of these things like Burger Week, I know, Seoul, was it Seoul of Korea? Is that Seoul of the South name? Korean Food Seoul Tours. Of yeah, we, almost, uh, those will down. be announced in February of 2024. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a link on our website to sign up for notification, which if you're interested in literally the best Korean food tour ever, it is phenomenal. The amount of food we provide is astonishing. Um, we would really recommend doing that because our tours that start in May and go through October usually sell out as soon as we put them on, on yeah. line. So yeah. do not tarry if you're interested in doing it. And where, and what day should they check? And where is, should they go? Um, the beginning of February, February, but if they sign okay. up for the reminder, they'll send a reminder and say, Hey, the tours are going to open up in a week. They'll open up okay. a day whatever. So, okay. And it's a book price. Obviously you have to pay for it, but um, it's a bus that goes around to different restaurants, right? Um, we do, we usually do, um, we do four restaurants, Korean street okay. food, typically a barbecue restaurant. We mm -hmm. usually do a home cooking, Korean home cooking, and then we do a dessert place as well. We have a tour guide, Sarah Park, who I don't know if you know Sarah, but she's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's got not just the knowledge of the food, but kind of why they do things a certain way, why mm, okay. home cooking is 27 different bowls of food and what it all means and when people, why people eat it and what's the meaning behind it. She does, she's got great context. Um, and our restaurants do a fantastic job and the amount of food that you get. I mean, this is not a tasting tour. It's a <laughs> full a meal at yeah. every stop and yeah. there are to go boxes. So yeah. you're bringing it home. I mean, it's an astonishing amount of food. Like we, in our notes to people, we literally say, do not eat breakfast. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> you, will, is not... you, will, you will regret it by a stop two if you eat breakfast. Yes, yes. There's so, so much food, but it's a great tour. And she's not exaggerating because that tour is sold out really fast. And it wouldn't be if it wasn't that good. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, EV Remodeling Inc. and Clayway Fiber. Appreciate you all supporting us. And, uh, you know, if you're listening to this as an audio podcast, like us, review us wherever you're listening to this. And if you're on Facebook or YouTube, please share it with your friends. Learn a little bit more about what's going on in Gwinnett County. So thank you all. Appreciate it.